gives me great pleasure to introduce our two speakers today, Stephen and Taylor Smith, who are the owners of Muse GR, an interactive art gallery on the west side of Grand Rapids. Through Muse, Stephen and Taylor connect with the community through art to encourage positive transformation and discovery of one's purpose and passion. Stephen is a local photographer and educator for the Grand Rapids Public Schools, and Taylor has gained a love for writing and digital media while working many years in nonprofit communication. Together, they serve the use of Grand Rapids and aim to inspire through others through artistic collaboration. If we can all put our hands together and welcome them to the stage. Thank you. Hello everybody, how you guys doing? Yeah, so I'm Steven, this is Taylor, and welcome to Muse. Yeah. Um, so yeah, this morning we would like to just share with you a little bit more about who we are, our story, um, our journey um, getting to Muse, and how we've embraced um, influence along the way. All right, so this picture, this is me. <clears throat> I'm from California. Um, I was raised in San Francisco. So that's, that's a place that's immer immersed in a lot of art and creativity. Um, I didn't real like as I was getting older and as we opened this space, I realized how much that city was like filled with art. Um, I realized that in high school, I kind of had like my own little art business. I, <laughs> as I, cause people always say, are you an artist? And I'm usually like, oh no, but this was like, these were like t-shirts I used to make like at my school, people would pay me to make their t-shirts and it was like a real popular thing. This was maybe back like in 2003, four and five. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I, I don't know, I changed a little bit in terms of maybe appearance and things that I value, but this was me back in the days. <laughs> yeah, we went in, we've went and discovered some pictures from the old days. Um, these were my friends, um, and we did a lot of things. Uh, <laughs> so I, I was from a big city. Um, we didn't always follow the rules. We didn't always follow the law, unfortunately. Um, and we got in a lot of, we almost got in a lot of trouble. So I didn't get in too much trouble, but I did a lot of things that I probably should have gotten in trouble for. Um, like this, like um, I was in college in this picture, and in my hands I'm doing like, some things with them. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so enough about me. Yeah, and I grew up here in Grand Rapids. Um, I went to East Kentwood High School um, and have been here my whole life. Um, I have two sisters. Um, both of them are floating around here. Um, and yeah, so I, I've been here. I went away for college and um, came back home after. So I met Steve after I graduated from college. I graduated from the University of Illinois. Um, I studied journalism, and I met Steve as he was here in Grand Rapids. He soon, he graduated from Fisk in Nashville, and then came to Grand Rapids, and was pursuing his master's in education at Grand Valley. So we met here in Grand Rapids. Yeah. Uh, we soon got engaged. Yeah, so this was like, this was like when we got engaged. I thought it was pretty romantic. Um. <laughs> So what, what's pictured here, I, um, so this was like at my apartment, I turned it into like a restaurant and I actually had, like there was a, there was a, a boy next door and he wanted to be a chef. So <laughs> I actually cooked, but I was like, how about you come, you could come to my restaurant. And I like, I designed my apartment to look like a little restaurant. I went to my church and I put, like, you only see one, but it was all over the whole house. It was like candles on the floor, and he was a, he was a waiter. So he had, to, I had to, he had the little towel on his arm. <laughs> yeah, and it was, I mean, she said, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it, it was really nice. It, it was fun. Uh, soon after we got engaged, uh, I was diagnosed with a skin lymphoma, and so a huge part of the beginning of our marriage was focused on my treatment plan and us figuring out <clears throat> when we could start our family. Um, and so uh, that was, yeah, it was a challenge. Um, it, it did let me know, like, because this, this was a serious thing, and we had just, we had been engaged for maybe a week or two, or, yeah, about a week or two, and then we discovered this, and I was like, 
I mean, I'm with her. So it was like, it didn't, it didn't bother me. And, it, and basically, like, that journey, like we, still, like, we still go through that now. And everything that we've been doing along this time, it's like, there's always little things that come up, but we keep pushing through. And it's, I wouldn't say, like, we don't notice it, but we don't let it stop anything. Um, it was kind of cool when we got, when we, so we got married. And as we were reflecting, we was like, we got our um, in, engagement. Um, the reception was actually at the Gram. So we thought that was cool as we were like looking back on the fact that we now have a gallery. Um, we started um, searching. We went on a search. Um, we wanted to do a not conventional way of where we were gonna live. So basically we was like, all right, let's start our, let's start our journey like not conventional, let's not buy a house. She originally wanted a regular house, but I was like, let's do something different. Um. Yeah, so uh, Stephen had started a business doing photography, and so we spent, we still do, spend quite a bit of our time doing photography. And so he uh, wanted to create a space where um, he could have a photography studio. The original idea was to have a place where um, photographers could come and have backdrops designed by local artists. We wanted it to be like always changing, kind of like interactive scenes that people could come and have cool photos in, have Instagrammable moments, or have professional photos. And so we also wanted it to feel really collaborative. So that was what started our journey with Muse, the idea, and we just kind of started digging into it within our first year of marriage. It was a lot, but yeah, it was it was like a huge passion of ours, so. Yeah. <laughs> so when I was saying like, when we were trying to go find our house, right? We are like, we wanted to be able to support our studio space and offset the cost. Um, I've, I'm, I've been a part of so many um, photography co-ops and they always close and we were going through a business class with Spring GR and they had us interview like the, the people we worked with. So as we interviewed them, they were always saying the overhead is the reason why they close. So I was like, let's try to find a building that we can live on top and have our business on the bottom so we can offset those costs and we won't be like closing. So we searched. We, the one we really wanted was on the west side, the building we wanted, but we didn't get it. We prayed a lot. And um, someone who came to view the space was like, you get a better, a better building on a more main street with um, with more space. And then, so we found this place right here <laughs> and we closed. Um, yeah. So yeah, this is our realtor. Um, he was a huge part of the process helping us um, find this place. And um, yeah, everything just kind of um, happened. It, the Even closing on this place, it took a while. We, we thought we were gonna close on like Halloween and it ended up not. In it happening until like December of 2016. Um, this building um, was an adult bookstore. And so this is what it looked like when we bought it. It had been an adult bookstore for the last 50 years. Um, we found some old photos. Yeah. yeah. We did a lot of research. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was pretty cool. So um, like this, this side that we're on right now, as you can see, it didn't exist. Oh, wait, not this. There, we've seen a picture where this building next door didn't exist yet. Um, and there's like these big trees on the side. I'm like, should we plant some trees? Because that was kind of cool. But Yeah, the space was like, um, it was like two buildings kind of. So like when we started the construction, we saw like in this wall there were like doors. It was kind of weird. But they opened up to brick and then... Um, we realized too, like on the other side, the basement is only on the other side. And so um, over time, um, they kind of like added on and they added an upstairs. Um. Something, something kind of cool, kind of, kind of cool. Like this sign was like, like in this picture how there's no, nothing there. This sign was like behind the walls. Yeah. Like as we started tearing the walls down, it was like, and this sign was like, construction company, they use it as like a table when they were eating. <laughs> we came home and they were like, just, they had it like flipped on the table and we were just eating pizza. <laughs> it was funny, so this place was really 
terrible looking, <laughs> if if I can say so myself. It was like a secret room on the other side, so you didn't know it was there. It was really nasty. Um, this <laughs> this couch was really nasty. The carpet was really nasty. And so that whole side that was over here, like this was one of the rooms. And Yeah. It was like built up. This, this right here is that ramp. And we had to like extend the ramp out. But like over where they have their cameras, this was like built up like on a platform where they have their captures for their dance and stuff like that. Yeah. And the owner was like, hey, all, this in, all the inventory was still in here. <laughs> so <laughs> they were like, um, when you guys close, you guys can just sell the inventory. I was like, I, I don't want any of it. <laughs> Um, that was we we actually made that part of the the purchase deal. It had to be gone and removed. Um, it's probably some stuff maybe someone here wanted to see. It was like first editions of old porno magazines. <laughs> the the transformation is still catching some people off guard. Like within the last couple of weeks, we've actually had people come looking for the adult bookstore, and we've had the property since 2016. It's like, they're like, what in the world? Like, sure I'm so confused. Odd. They're sure about odd times. Yeah. <laughs> we do our trash at night, so it's like late, I'm doing the trash, and it's like someone's down here. I'm like, hi, sir, can I help you? And they're like, where's the, where's the bookstore? I was like, you didn't, did you see the front? Like, it's not. <laughs> We've been outside eating breakfast one morning, and it was like somebody circling around. And we were like, oh, right. <laughs> it's like, it's not that anymore. So. Um, we did upstairs, too. Um, we, we had like a, I had a dream that I wanted to like live downtown in a, um, like a little high rise with the big, huge windows. And she was like, yeah, let's do it. But then it didn't work out that way. We, we started this business. So he's like, let's build it here. So we kind of made it look like it. I don't know if we have a picture in here. I think it's later. Oh, but yeah, we tried to, it needed a lot of work upstairs. But this is what it looked like before we not. It was like a move. It was like those shows. We watched those shows every night. Like, <laughs> and it, was, it really was like that. A lot of times, um, contractors like, it's, it's really not like the shows. But ours was kind of like the show. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and I, I'm not an artist, per se, um, but I drew out like what I saw for this space. Um, and this was before, this was like before we had it. And she was like, you, you actually were like, why are you doing that? Like, she was like, why are you doing that? And I was like, I just have to, because yeah, it's fun. Took our architect, yeah. Our yeah. Process with city planning. Um, so, like we said, our original idea was to have a photography studio, and um, we actually have found out that um, in this area, a photography studio in this space wasn't a permitted use. And um, so, it kind of go is like old zoning, and like with photography studios being like dark rooms and not really giving a lot of foot traffic. And so, um, we talked about adding a retail component, ways to like get people in. in in and out and um, just like engaging people in this community and so um, they suggested selling some of our photography and we were like well we don't want to just sell our photography we would want to like work with other people and allow them to show their work in here and sell their work and so we ended up kind of shifting all that we were doing into a gallery where we could still do photography we could still have photography on the walls but really open it up for the community and for other artists. So um, this, this was. was it kind of looked like mine a little bit, right? <laughs> <laughs> a little bit. Yeah. But. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. So we we had the space for nearly a year before we found our contractor. Um, we were like struggling to find someone to do it within our budget and. Um, someone who could really take our vision and make it make it come to life. So, um, in January, uh, we had signed the paperwork, and I had actually just found out that we were expecting. So we started this whole process. <laughs> wow! Well, like, so it's, it's, 
that's like every time you do something really big, <laughs> something else really big happens at the same time. Yeah. And the crazy thing is, at the same time, like at our church, something really big happens at the same time we do something really big. We go to the revolution. Um, and the funny thing about this process, we were we were about to um, give up on trying to find a, a contractor. And I was like, I'm just gonna be the contractor. And I went through, I had about, in December I had at least 20 meetings. I had at least 20 meetings in December and I put all the pieces together. I seen it was gonna cost around 70,000. Um, and our budget was like 140,000. And our last meeting, I got really excited. I was like, I found somebody. And then he was like, I can do the whole project for you. And I, and I believed him. He never did a project before. It was so, his, this was his first. But we, we pray and we were like, we have faith. We were like, he's the one. And as you can see, it, he was the one. <laughs> um, this, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that was Jesse, Jesse DeWitt. Um, yeah, so we started, yeah, we started doing the construction. Um, we took it like all I the way down. I signed down right away. <laughs> <laughs> this, was, this was actually, this was the first thing I did like as soon as yeah, we started taking stuff down, but then we realized like we shouldn't do that because it's a commercial space and like you're not supposed you to actually do that. permits sometimes. To, yeah, to take stuff down. So then we like stopped. <laughs> it's like they really like, on the internet. The internet can, the internet's like bad sometimes because we <laughs> we were going through the process and we were like looking at the press and people were like, oh my gosh, it's it's so dirty in there. Um, there's probably can I say sperm in, in this room? <laughs> there's like there's there's probably sperm everywhere on the carpets, but I wanted to show like we ripped everything up. <laughs> everything was ripped up. We took walls like this was a whole room. <laughs> we took rooms down, studs out and everything. So <laughs> why are you laughing so hard? <laughs> So we, um, we opened Muse in May of 2018, and um, we also were a part of Start Garden 100 Ideas. Um, we won um, the competition um, that July. It's a little story with that, <laughs> a little bit. So we, we did the competition, um, and then the next day was our anniversary. Where we won this at was right near where we just had, where we got married. Um, and then the next day, we had a she had a baby. <laughs> I did, I purposely didn't add my picture into the start garden one because I was so swollen. It was like <laughs> I was, I was like, wondering why. We just, I was shocked. <laughs> I was like, okay. Yeah. So now um, our son um, Stephen, we call him Trilogy because he's the third. <laughs> um, he's one years old now. So a word, word about Muse spread really quickly, um, and it's become a popular place for people to host their events. Um, we've had some really exciting moments here um, over the last year, and um, we've enjoyed every, every bit of it. Um, and so it's been a cool place for people to teach classes um, and just collaborate. Can you tell about this one time? This one time we overbooked. Oh yeah, we we overbooked ourselves, so we literally cleared up our cleared out our apartment upstairs and had a class upstairs. And we, we were it, like, we called it. Um, what did I call it? Muse Art House. Yeah. yeah, we invited them to Muse Art House, and we we like put all of our furniture in our bedroom, and then yeah, we had class up there. So it was actually fun. So it, it actually like sparked me. Like I'm a creative. I'm like, all right, so Muse Art House has to be a thing. Let's buy a new place for us to live. Are <laughs> <laughs> you serious? Like, I'm serious to be Muse Art House. <laughs> yeah, so throughout this journey, um, we've learned how important it is for us as creatives to be authentic. And we chose to create an untraditional gallery um, to help eliminate barriers for people. And by creating a space that we feel comfortable in, um, we, get, uh, we give people a chance to um, 
create and we also allow them to kind of recreate the narrative around art and more specifically for artists of color who um, historically weren't recognized as artists. And so um, that's something that we really like to embrace and we like our artists to embrace. And that, oh, I was supposed to skip slides, sorry. Um, all right, so like there's been a lot of times where like where we doubt ourselves because like we'll come to rooms like this and they'll expect us to be an expert and it's like I don't always feel like an expert. Um, our goal hasn't necessarily been to become an expert though. We just want to always remain authentic in every room that we step in and always affirm each other like when it's like all right like for this talk, because we were like, are we supposed to be doing this? Like, But we're like, this is us. We we have a gallery. We're, we can have a, <laughs> we can talk to people. <laughs> and we just dig deep and and be who we were created to be. Um, so a lot of time, like a question, like as a gallery owner, we meet a lot of artists. And sometimes I'm like, are you an artist? And they're like, oh, no, I'm not an artist. Kind of like I was doing. And I did that on purpose because it's like, you just, um, they're hesitant to claim who they are. So it's like you're battling with something called imposter syndrome. Have you guys heard of that? Oh, yeah. yeah. So it's like, um, so, some of the things that bring, bring out like that, that feeling is new environments, academic settings, being in the workplace, social interactions and relationships. Um, that's where imposter syndrome shows its ugly face. Um, and family expectations, anxiety, depression, being a perfectionist, and sometimes racial identity cause like onsets that. So in those times, it's like you just have to be like, I'm here for this. This is what this is what I'm made for, and you just gotta embrace it. Yeah, so that's the key to overcoming that syndrome, and not comparing yourself to others. And uh, we feel like you can't be an imposter when you're walking in purpose. Um, you when you're being who you're called to be. Um, so we strive to live our life. Um, in a, at a point of convergence. And so um, f our faith is a really big part of who we are. Um, and we, um, we said we go to the revolution and our pastor is um, connected to Dr. Martin Williams and he took us through a process of um, understanding purpose and passion. And so uh, we do this often. And I've actually been redoing this for myself now in this season, now that I'm a mom. Like, what is my purpose now that I'm a mom? How have things shifted? Um, evaluating uh, where I am in this season. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's actually like, a act, this is an activity that we do with like a lot of students. Um, for Art Prize last year, we, we probably had about five classes. We, we met maybe about 300 students. And they come through, and we go through this lesson. Um, today, we actually provided you guys with a copy. We could pass around the pencils. Um, but basically, you go through, like you think about your purpose, and your purpose is like, why are you here? What are you called to? What are some of the problems you think that you can solve? What, what are some of the things that irk you? And that's, that's more connected to what your purpose is. And then as far as passion, it's like what are the things that I really love to do? What are the things that um, you love so much that you will do it for free? Um, and what are some of the things that you do and you just lose track of time while you're doing it? Um, so if you guys can just take a little second, think about purpose. Like what am I supposed to be doing? What? Why am I on earth? What problem was I put here to solve? And then passion. What do I love? What's, what do I spend my time doing? All right. So that middle section. Yeah, it's, the middle section is where you, you kind of start to think, how do my purpose and passion come together? Um, what, what is that kind of sweet spot that I can live from where um, I'm getting a little bit of both? 
And so, um, for us, for Stephen and I, um, what is our purpose? Let's let's give him a little, like thirty seconds to think about. If you took your left and your right, your purpose and your passion, what's some things that you can do that kind of see both sides? Um, yeah, you could just write down one or two things, because that's like the the place where you want to live at. Like w when you think about what type of job do I want to have or a career, it's like if you want to have a comfortable life where you enjoy living it in and you don't have to take vacations from it, you want to do something that touches on both your purpose and your passion, the place where they converge, the place where they meet. Um, So for us, um, we feel like we're called to youth. Um, Steven has worked for Grand Rapids Public Schools for the last nine years. And um, I just recently um, started working with the Kent County Prevention Coalition and working with youth. Um, and um, yeah, we're really passionate about seeing um, youth grow and develop. Um, and so we feel like we're called to help youth because we want to help them fight hopelessness, um, which we feel like affects their behavior. Um, and so we often are seeing students who are um, in risky situations. And so, um, yeah, kind of honing in on that hopelessness helps them to kind of turn, turn things around. Yeah. And so we're, per we're um, real passionate about the arts and helping other people pursue their purpose and passion. So that's why we do like the activities that we're doing now and having this space. It's like that was our perfect meeting point, all of our gifts. It's like this place allows us to release our gifts. Like I'm really into music. We we got a grant last month with the city to put a studio in here. So we'll be putting a really nice studio in here. Music is one of my passions. So purpose, working with the youth. So when I put it together, having a, a youth program where they get to do music, it's like that's that center point for me. Um, so with that, we created a nonprofit called Muse Ed, and that's something that we'll be launching this this upcoming fall, like the next next year fall. Um, and yeah, we feel like you have true harmony when when you find that place of convergence and be um, your authentic self. Um, so yeah, what you create has the ability to uh, just transcend barriers. It can transcend culture, race, and gender. Um, and everyone's watching as it takes form um, with social media, with um, news, with family, friends. What you're doing, you can turn around and it can be all over the place in a good way, like everybody's seeing it. So it's good to be intentional about what you're creating, how it's um, changing. Um, the, the community that you're in. Um, and so as a creative, we feel like we um, have a responsibility to just be aware of what we're called to create um, so that we can remain authentic. And we, we think one of the biggest keys to this is social responsibility. Um, yeah, like she said, we think you should be um, in charge and have a lot of character when you're creating something because we're living in a culture that constantly wants to change us. So we just have to be responsible and just be authentic. So yeah. Thank you. Everyone give a round of applause to Stephen and Taylor. And we have um, a few minutes for Q&A. Um, so I'm going to kick it off with a question um, on our theme of Muse. What would you guys say your biggest Muse was to start Muse? Was there a space or an idea or something else that you guys used kind of as inspiration when creating this space? Yeah, I, well, we didn't put, the, you had that picture of AK Ricks in our, um, like, folder. Uh, we love their, the design of their um, building. Um, so I would say, like, the design of the way that it looks on the outside was a huge inspiration. And I think Steve's childhood was also a huge inspiration. Um, growing up in San Francisco, uh, his, he grew up in a four-bedroom house with um, a storefront underneath. Um, and they owned beauty supply stores. So he's, he's kind of recreating kind of what he grew up in. So, um, yeah. And I would, yeah, that's cool. 
Some of the um, events that we've had, they haven't really been like partnerships, but like um, we had like a, an event where Morehouse students came from Atlanta and um, they were here learning about hospitality, the hospitality industry. And so just um, being able to work with people who aren't from Grand Rapids um, and being young people because we're, we feel like we're called to youth. And Morehouse is, um, a, a college that has a, a lot of, it's a male college, a historically black college. So just being able to connect with that demographic and um, allow them to see he, this space was, it was really cool, so. When, also when people, like when they use our space to like share information, that's one of my, um, I enjoy that. Um, allow, bring in awareness to things. Um, and Chris, some of the Christmas parties, um, it would, it's some groups that it's like, I wouldn't have thought that they would use this space. And it's like really cool. Yeah, it's we get to kind of be a part of all of it because we were like upstairs and it's been fun to meet new people that way. like to let her speak but um we love when people rent the space um that that's been our biggest thing that supports the the doors being open um our passion is the muse ed uh, piece we'll be fundraising for that in the near future um but art the the really thing the really cool thing about the selling art portion is we do that because it's like we can help artists pursue their purpose and passion. It's, I, this sounds really corny, but it, warm, it warms my heart. <laughs> when, um, like when we see artists that maybe their family like is, all you do is art, you're always painting and it's not paying off for you. And they're painting sales here. And then we're like, hey, you sold a painting. And then they're like, for real? And it's like almost like, so, <laughs> So we took on the, the task of working with new artists, emerging artists, and um, emerging and neo collectors. So we want to help young people, anybody, but we're targeting young people to start their art collections. Um, and when we sell art, we like really excited. Um, <laughs> yeah. So I think I would be, I'm most excited when I see art sell. But people booking events is what really like keeps the doors open. But yeah. I know there's a lot of business owners um, in the room and people who might have to go through kind of what you guys went through with renovating the space. It's really hard to find a space here in Grand Rapids right now. So I'm wondering if you guys have any advice for someone who might potentially want to open a space and kind of that process you went through, what was like the biggest takeaway you had from that that you would warn someone if they're going through it? Um, I would say ask a lot of questions um, and allow it's okay to be kind of in a vulnerable space um, and just be open to learning throughout the journey um, we didn't know anything when we first started this and um, it's we've oh, it's actually helped us to have conversations with the city um, where they're like trying to find ways to better support small businesses and um, help get those questions answered um, so yeah, so there's a lot of great progress being made um, that will hopefully make it even easier for people who are interested in doing something similar. One of, one of the keys would be to reach out to the commissioner in the area yeah. that you're opening a business in and 
form a relationship. They're all really relational people. Yeah. Um, Your neighborhood business association is also extremely helpful. Um, learning um, who your neighbors are and getting to know them is also really helpful. Um, and yeah, even asking them questions before you buy the property is also helpful. And the mo I, I would say the most most important part is like heart, like your heart is like be a good person, have good character. And it's like when there's times that the rules might have said no, it's like they're like, I really want to help these people. What can we do? And it's like they'll come and they won't like change the rules for you, but they'll they'll find like little loopholes, like how this was not a permitted space. But they're like, well, if you add retail, then it's permitted. And it's like, yeah, because at the end of the day, they want to see you win. They want to see the neighborhood grow. They want to see the neighborhood develop. <laughs> 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 But yeah, they um, everyone has been really supportive. Um, so yeah, they do they do just want to see you win. So they will help you find a way. Okay, last question. Uh, what led you to come up with the name Leo's? Good question. That was Steve's idea. I got that when I was sleeping. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we, were, we 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 had this vision for this bit for this building to be a photography studio, but we were going through a spring GR class, and then our, we made the, um, we had to purchase, and we are like, okay, so we were starting for photography, we were like, okay, now we have a gallery, um, I was like, and we would just brainstorm names, and say names, write names down, and it didn't feel right, but then I was like, I thought about the name, well, um, it was an Adam Sandler movie, um, it was a, and there was a nanny, I don't know if, I can't remember the name of it, but I have watched it like 20 times. So when I was sleeping, I had a dream about that movie, and then it was like, in the movie, she was like, can I be your muse? And then, so I had that in it, I had that dream, and then in class that day, I was like, oh, muse, and she was like, oh, that's it. And we looked up the definition, and it was perfect, it fit. Oh, you guys have one more question. Can you buy art today? Yes, you can. <laughs> you can buy art today. <laughs> No, let's give them a round of applause, guys.